something that big brands use so well is color. More specifically, gradients. These might look simple, but are not always executed well. In this video, we are going to learn how top brands use gradients and even go a step further and animate them. This is not a random animation, but I will show you a process where you will have full control over these gradients. So if we take a look at the intro video in here, we can see that we have these nice rotational gradients in here with lights blending into each other, and they're also moving and rotating and so on. So we will see how we can actually create this. We also have this gradient that is kind of symbolizing these Nordic lights in here with these linear gradients in here. So let's get started. I'm going to go into a new composition. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go to the shape layer tool, bring in an ellipse tool, and I'm going to start drawing ellipses in here. So let's create the first one. Very simple. And then we can go to the fill. We can hold Alt on our keyboard to cycle through different options in here. And what I want is to have this linear gradient in here. So let's enter. You can give it, of course, any color. What I like to do is actually the second color have an opacity that is lower in like 40 would work and press OK. And if you go to the pointer tool, you can actually pick that gradient and define where it will fall on the shape layer. Perfect, so that's the first color, so that's color one, and now we can create the next one. So I'm going to create the next one, Command-D on my keyboard, just duplicate, and place that wherever you like. And this second color in here, I can give it any color once again, I'm going to give it a yellow color. This one, I'm going to make it like violet. Perfect, so to create another color, Command-D on your keyboard, and this time we are going to create full orange color in here. So something like that. And finally, I'm going to make color for Command D on your keyboard and place it right over there. I'm going to give this a blue, a nice blue color. So I get like that. And this is actually good. I'm going to move this so that I tweak where the gradient falls. This is what I like. Now I'm going to select the first three colors in here, color two, three, and four, and move them right over here. And for now, I am going to hide those. And now we are actually going to start to animate our gradient. To animate it, we're going to animate these shapes. So let's go to the first color here, hit P on our keyboard, and do a first keyframe right over here. So I'm going to move that a few frames forward, and then in here, with the time at the start in here, I'm going to put the shape layer out of the screen, just like that. And if we play that, we have this simple linear animation. So I'm going to pick both of these keyframes, hit F9 on your keyboard, and now we have it a bit more smooth. And what I like to do is actually go to the graph editor and then pick this last keyframe in here and pull it so that this curve is very steep at the start in here. And that way it will start fast and end slowly. When you are happy with this animation, we can start animating the next colors. So select them, click the toggle to view them in here. And I'm actually going to move them slightly upward, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to align that to the end of this keyframe. So just like that, hit P on your keyboard, and then we're going to toggle the stopwatch. And that would kind of take this position and put it on these keyframes in here. So now I'm going to push these keyframes around a second backward in here, and then here I can give them another position. So I'm going to scrub through these values in here with all of the layers selected, and I'm going to put them out of the screen just like that. So now let's do another keyframe in here. Let's go in here move a few frames forward in here, and I actually want to kind of make space for these shapes. So right now, as you can see, the shapes are getting all over that shape. So I'm going to simply move this shape in here, make sure the keyframes are aligned in here, and we're going to move it right over there. Now we are going to select all of those keyframes, and like this, we are going to make sure that the speed timing of this animation is identical for all the different layers. And we're going to go into the graph editor. We're going to select all these keyframes in here. And we're going to simply give them an easy ease out right over there with the graph editor. And then we're going to select all the end keyframes in here and give them an easy ease in right over here. And as you can see, the graph looks similar in here. Let's zoom in a little bit in here. And now we can perform the same thing that we've done before to pull these handles in here and go to the end in here and pull that all the way in. And now if we play this, we can see this nice animation where all the speed kind of meshes. Perfect. Now I would like to introduce today's sponsor, 
ClickUp, which is a platform that is especially useful if you do any client work, freelance, or even personal projects. What I like about it is that it is super easy to keep things organized with its hierarchy. So let me show you a quick example. Let's create a project here and call that MoGraph YouTube videos. Continue and create space. Now I can press the plus icon and create a list. I will call this YouTube video one. Let's create. Now I can start creating tasks. So first research, then creating the animation, then filming, and finally editing. With that ready, I can simply go to the board view right over here and put any of these into the in progress to start working on that task. You can also add more groups here if you need. Another thing that I find handy for my freelance projects is that I can track the time for each task. So I can simply click on this button and start tracking the time while I work. If you are interested in this, I am leaving a link in the description or simply visit tryclickup.co forward slash Stefan Zammit where you can start using it for free. So now let's continue with the gradients. Great, so we have animation, but it doesn't look at all like a gradient. So how we can do that? Let's see. So we are first going to go to the layer in here, go to new, and we're going to go to solid. And we are going to rename this to background, BG, and click OK. And then we're going to position that layer right over here, go to the effects and presets, and bring in a four color gradient. Let's drag and drop that over the background. Perfect, so now we have our gradient, kind of. We are actually going to use this gradient just to give a subtle effect to our final gradient, not to actually create the gradient animation. So let's go to the color one, change it to blue, a dark blue, and I'm going to go over these colors and change them to black. I'm going to go over this color in here and I'm going to make it like a cyan, but make it very dark, somewhere like that. And now we have this like nice subtle background. And now we are going to actually start creating the gradient from these shapes. So I have the animation here. Let's start creating the gradient. So let's go to layer, new and adjustment layer. And now we are going to rename this to dynamic gradient effect and start introducing some effects. So the first one would be a simple fast box blur. So just drag and drop that right over there. And for this one, we are just going to give it a value of four. And then we can move to the next effect, which is a directional, directional blur and drag and drop that right over here. And we are going to bump this very high. So somewhere around 500. And immediately we can see our gradient forming in here. We can give this any direction. I like something like this. I'm also going now to add another effect named twirl and we are going to drag and drop that right over there. Now, before we continue, I would like to actually humbly ask you if you can simply comment below, like, and even subscribe. This will actually help me to reach more people and be able to create more videos like this one. So let's continue. And we can start twirling this gradient like that. And as you can see, it works like magic. So we can increase the twirl radius somewhere around 30, I find works really well. And we can also change the center of this twirl effect. So we can just pick it. And as you can see, this will give you a different effect wherever you put it. So let's leave it in the center. And finally, I'm going to add an effect named CC Lens. So as they can drop that right over there, just increase the size to somewhere around here. And that would give these nice like edges in here that glow with the gradient. So now let's check our animation to see how that looks. And as you can see, we have these nice now gradient that is actually already working for us but we want to animate this a little bit further. To do this, I'm actually going to animate this start, so it starts without kind of a gradient. So I'm going to go over this place right over here, I'm going to keyframe the blur radius of the fastbox blur, keyframe the blur length of the directional blur, and finally, I'm also going to keyframe the angle right over here. So just make sure you have blur radius, blur length, and angle of the twirl that are keyframed. And now I'm going to move a few frames forward somewhere around here. And I'm going to set the angle to zero. And I'm going to actually set the fast bl box blur to around 30. And I'm going to go to the blur length of the directional blur and set that to zero. And now we have that animation here where it starts without that gradient effect. So let's tweak this a little bit further. 
so that it's more subtle. So I'm going to place those keyframes right over there and I'm going to place this somewhere around here. Pick everything and hit F9 and let's see how that looks. So now we have that drop of color that just goes down and then blends into that gradient. Wonderful. Perfect. I like how this looks. And now what I would like to do is to actually start creating that nice kind of rotation. So I'm going to go forward to around the five second mark right over here. And I'm going to go to the twirl in here. And this is already has the stopwatch on in here. So we just simply need to edit the twirl right over here. So now we have this nice animation with that, with that wheel coming on in there. This already looks quite great, but I still would like to add some more animation to this to make it look more dynamic. So to do this, I'm going to perform a simple step, go to layer, go to new and go to null object. Perfect. So we have this null layer now and I'm going to pick these four colors and we are going to simply parent them to this null layer right over there. And now, as you can see, this null layer in here is in the center. I'm going to go over this layer, hit you once again, and I'm going to see where we have the twirl effect that is animated in here. So we have the twirl that is coming from here to here. This is kind of creating that rotation. And I'm going to make that rotation even better using this null layer. Don't forget we have parented these colors to that null layer. So let's hit R on our null layer, click the stopwatch let's go forward to where we have the other keyframes in here and now we can simply give it like a value of maybe 180 in here don't forget to adjust its timing hit f9 on your keyboard go to the graph editor and just pull the last handle in right over here and that looks really nice and now the final thing that we need to do is to actually animate these colors this gradient out of the screen so to do that, it is super simple. You're going to pick these four colors. You're going to go hit U on your keyboard so that it will show your keyframes. And then we are simply going to go to around the six second mark in here and just pull them out like that. And hit F9 on your keyboard once again. And that's basically it. So let's see how this looks. Actually, let's go to the graph editor first and perform the same thing that we have done before, the easy ease out in here. And this one we can pull like that. And now we have this nice animation that is, has this, that drop of color that comes in in here, then kind of rotates and go out of the screen like that. So the first gradient effect is done and now we can move forward to the linear gradient effect. But before that, I actually would like to show you something in here. So we have this scene in here, which as you can see, doesn't have any gradient effect applied to it. And this is how it would look without that gradient, just the rotating circles basically. And I actually created a quick preset for you that you can just apply, which will basically create this dynamic gradient. So let's click on the adjustment layer right over here, go to animation presets, and I'm going to find the preset that I have made. So I have the gradient presets in here, and I actually made one for the directional gradient and one for the dynamic gradient. Let's explore the dynamic gradient for now, and we're simply going to double click. Once we apply this, we can see the gradient that is already working right over here. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to play and we have our gradient right over there. It works perfectly. All it takes is one click and it will apply all the presets for you. And what's great is that you can actually tweak this and animate this further. So if we go to the dynamic gradients right over here, we can tweak things like the overall blur. So we can make them, those colors come together like that. And let's give that a small value. We can even change the gradient direction and the intensity. So we can make that smaller or bigger like that and even change its direction like that. And then you also can tweak the rotation distortion. So we can animate that if you would like. And everything is keyframeable using these stopwatches in here. And also the rotation size, we can tweak that as well. And finally, you also have the rotation center that you can tweak in here to get a different effect over that gradient. So now let's see how this looks. And as you can see, this looks totally different. Perfect. So of course, make sure to follow this tutorial to learn how to actually create all of this. But if you would like to work a little bit faster, you can get this preset, which you can apply basically in a single click. I'm going to upload this on my Patreon account. And also I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can get this. So now let's move on to the linear gradient. So I am in a new composition here. I still have that nice background that I have designed 
earlier and I'm going to bring in a few shape layers. So let's bring in an ellipse, just as I have done before exactly. I'm going to pick the selection tool in here and modify this gradient like that. Once again, you can give this any color. I'm going to rename this to color one and I'm going to duplicate this and move it around. We can change that to maybe this purple and position that right over there. And the second one, duplicate and place that right over there. And once again, give it any color that you like. This is good. And what you can do is actually to position these in different places on our screen, just like that. Now we are going to go to the layer, new, and go to adjustment layer. Let's pull that up to the top in here. And let's rename that to linear gradient. And now I'm going to bring in a few effects. So the first one, turbulent displace, just drag and drop that right over there. Let's first from displacement, pick twist, for amount, I'm going to give it 600, so it's very high. And size, I'm going to give that a 350. Now, as you can see, it looks all messed up. Don't worry, we're going to fix that. Now we're going to go to the effects and presets once again, and we're going to bring in a directional blur and place that right over there. And we can simply increase this somewhere around 600. And now we can give it a tangle. And we are basically done, as you can see. The only thing is that it is not animated. To animate it, it is super simple. Let's go to Evolution, hold Option on your keyboard, and you're going to, to click and then type in Time times 50. And now we have this nice animation that is happening in here with this linear gradient. Perfect, this looks nice. Now, a few things that we can mention is that actually you can increase the details in here. So if we go to the complexity in here, we can increase that and as you can see you can make it as detailed as you would like let's turn that back to around three and i really like how this looks and the other thing that we can mention is that we can still animate those ellipses those colors in here so if we do a simple animation here hit p on our keyboard click the stopwatch and make them come in so let's pull them out hit f9 here hold these keyframes and hit f9 now we can animate those in just like that so you can see the flexibility that this brings you. And once again, you can go to the linear gradient in here and you can even keyframe things like direction, blur length, and so on to even get more flexibility. So finally, just to show you very quickly the actual direction preset that we have as well in here, I'm going to delete these and I'm going to go to my presets in here and find that quick directional gradient in here. Just drag and drop it right over there. And as you can see, this does it all automatically for us. And the great thing is that we have this effect in here, the directional gradient effect, which we can tweak everything from one place. So we can tweak the direction, we can tweak the gradient length, and we can increase the details, and even modify the speed in here. So if we give it a value of 100, the animation is faster, as you can see, while if we toggle that to zero, we now don't have any animation. So that's the preset. Once again, you will find the links in the description for that. Great. So finally, I would like to go to the first gradient composition here, and I'm going to now add my text animation. So let's just drag and drop this text animation that I have already done, and I'm going to place it a little bit forward and open it up a little bit, make it a bit longer. And by the way, if you would like to learn how to create text animation, I have a whole video tutorial on just text animation where you will learn how to create exactly this text animation. So let's preview this and see how everything looks. Wonderful, that is basically it. I would actually love to see what you think about this tutorial and also maybe see what you create with this tutorial. So please let me know in the comment section below.